Local 4 News begins right now with a breaking news alert. Good afternoon, everyone. We do start with breaking news. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. Out of Highland Park, the FBI agents have executed search warrants at the home of Michigan State Senator Burt Johnson and his office in Lansing. We go now to Local 4's Rod Maloney, who is on the scene with the very latest. A lot of people wondering why. Yes, a lot of people are wondering why, and we still don't know the specifics here, Rhonda, but we do know that the FBI just cleared the scene here about a half hour ago, and it was at 7 a.m. that they went ahead and executed the simultaneous search warrants. In other words, they had two teams of officers here and also at Burt Johnson's offices up at the state capitol. The FBI and the Michigan State Police investigators, many of whom cannot have their faces shown, went over the state senator's home with a fine tooth comb. At one point, we saw FBI agents pulling furniture apart inside. When they left, they had boxes full of documents in his personal computer. The 44-year-old state senator elected back in 2010, and he's term limited at the end of next year. Prior to that, he served two terms in the Michigan House of Representatives. Johnson was born and raised in the city of Detroit and is the father of four children. He serves the second Senate district, including Highland Park and the Gross Points. He sits on a number of Senate committees, including agriculture and human services. His neighbors today were very surprised to see this scene and are not certain what to make of it. Yeah, I'm worried. I'm worried about that as well as, uh, you know, uh, if he's okay and if uh, his mother is okay. I'm not sure um, what's going on with that, but Bert's a pretty solid guy and always has been really hands on with the community. So I'm not sure. I'm not. I'm just not sure. It's kind of shocking. Yeah. Yes. This is shocking, though. This is this is uh, overkill. Look like to me. So I don't know. I'd be glad when I could see him. So uh, the state senator has had issues with paying bills, particularly as it pertains to campaigns. He ran for the U.S. House a couple of years ago. Had a, a cup two, 15. He had a bench warrant issued for a civil case to do with a political political consultant that he owed money to. Those bills got paid, and he also had a campaign office that had financial issues as well. Uh, at this point, we're still trying to figure out precisely what it is that's gone on here. And so when we have, uh, the, certainly bring it to you, uh, it is our intent to try and uh, speak to Burt Johnson at some point today. Back to you. All right, Rod, we're having a little bit of trouble with your mic, so we're going to cut things off here, and we look forward to hearing from you a little later on today. Thank you. Local 4 was in the Detroit courtroom this morning as a man was formally charged with beating his stepmother to death. 36-year-old Raymond Mealy is charged with first-degree murder in the death of his stepmother, 64-year-old Lois Jackson. Relatives found her body in her home on Bramble Street near West Outer Drive in Warren on Detroit's west side. Family members tell Local 4 that Mealy is mentally ill. A Dearborn Heights man accused of supporting ISIS is in court for sentencing today. Khalil Abdul Rayan has pleaded guilty to two gun charges. The 22 year old was arrested last year after he was accused of trying to buy weapons while using marijuana and lying about it. He first came under FBI surveillance, though, in 2015 after he allegedly boasted about plans to, quote, shoot up a Detroit church. He was never charged with any terrorism related crimes. Let's go to Brandon. Talk about our forecast for this afternoon. Afternoon. Some mild air out there. Any more rain coming our way? Well, we do have a couple of chances this week. And listen, spring showers, April, May flowers. Maybe you've got some flowers already coming up. We have clouds out there, and if not for the clouds, I think we'd probably be heading into the 70s today. But instead, we've got middle and upper 50s all over southeastern lower in southern Ontario, 58 at Metro, Double Nichols 55 in Pontiac, Monroe is right there, Ann Arbor 55, Lapeer 55, 58 also in Mount Clemens. You see the winds out of the west southwest, they're not real strong. 5 to 13, but they're bringing in some drier air, some warmer air. So some of the fog and some of the clouds even thinning out as we head through the afternoon near 60, 61 degrees between 2 and 4 o'clock. Again, if we get a little bit more sunshine, we'll warm up a little bit more than this. And those winds pretty consistent out of the west southwest clouds to hazy sunshine. You can kind of see it here right now in the area. And we also in the area see some rain coming into the Great Lakes as we expect some of this coming your way in the overnight hours.
showers. So coming up, we'll track some rain showers for early Tuesday and then later in the week as well. In the meantime, if you're heading out, you need your forecast. You need your seven day. You can find your zone, our four zone weather right there on the weather tab of click on Detroit.com. All right, Brandon, thank you. This afternoon, we are hoping to learn more about the man taken into custody by Royal Oak Police early this morning following a six hour long standoff. A standoff unfolded on North Connecticut Street overnight, the area of 12 Mile and Campbell. If you're familiar with Royal Oak, police shot dozens of tear gas canisters into the home before the man surrendered around 530 in the morning. A 10 year old boy was also in the home at the time, and fortunately, he is OK. The search for answers continues today after a 32 year old woman is shot and killed on Detroit's west side. Police say that the woman was sitting in a car with her boyfriend outside of a home on Penrod off of Warren Avenue when someone in a dark SUV began firing shots at that vehicle, firing off about 15 rounds at the couple. Her family insists that she was not the intended target. The boyfriend was not hit and no word yet on any arrests. Also on Detroit's west side, another case of gun violence involving teenagers. This happened just after 1130 on Saturday night. Police say that bouncers threw the teens out of an after party on Grand River near Maplewood, and that's when an argument started and then shots were fired, killing one of the teenagers and injuring three others. The teen killed was actually a family member of a former police captain for the Detroit Police Department. The club has security cameras, which detectives are hoping will lead them to identify the gunman. An effort to recall Warren Mayor Jim Fouts moves to its next stage this afternoon. Fouts is in his third term as mayor of Warren. Political activist Joseph Hunt has presented positions to recall Fouts, who has denied his voice is on audio tape speaking disparagingly about people with disabilities, mental disabilities, and women and minorities. The Macomb County Election Commission meets today to approve or reject the petitions. Mayor Fouts is not required to be at that meeting. Also here in Detroit today, Secretary of Homeland Security John Kelly is paying us a visit. He plans to discuss immigration policies with representatives of the Detroit area's Arab American community. Kelly is also expected to be joined by Senator Gary Peters. Kelly and Peters are also planning to meet with Homeland Security personnel and observe border operations as well. So to come here on your Monday afternoon, we're going to take a look at some stories making headlines from across the world, and that includes an avalanche rescue in in Japan, airstrikes in Iraq, cyclones in Australia, and a massive apartment fire back here in the U.S. That's all coming up next. The Nova. Welcome back, everybody. Now to some stories that are making headlines across the world this afternoon. First, we go to Japan. That is where at least eight people were killed and dozens of others injured after an avalanche struck a group of climbers on Mount Nasu. The students were taking part in a mountain climbing exercise at the resort 70 miles north of Tokyo, where heavy weekend snow prompted an avalanche alert. Police have launched an investigation to learn why the group remained on the mountain even after that alert was issued. All of the bodies of the victims have been recovered. And next we go to Queensland, Australia. The region is under under high alert this morning, bracing for a major cyclone to hit the coast soon. The cyclone is expected to make landfall sometime today, and Brandon is tracking it right now. Cyclone's not something we're used to around here. Just how serious is this? No, it's the uh, same name as a hurricane, just a different body of water, different continent. Category four storm projected with 120 kilometer winds that will gust much stronger <coughs> than that. So by the time it makes landfall, Australia's major weather bureau said it may uh, even strengthen and more and it can uh, carry those winds up to 150 to 160 miles an hour causing devastation and huge amounts of damage. No evacuation orders have been issued yet, but as Rhonda said, the nation is on high alert right now. All right, Brandon, next we go to the Middle East in the ongoing battle to retake Mosul from ISIS extremists. The Pentagon is now investigating whether or not a U.S. military airstrike is responsible for massive civilian casualties there. 
As many as 200 people are believed to be dead in the collapse of a building under attack from coalition forces against the Islamic State in Mosul. Initial reports said that the building was hit by an American airstrike. Now some sources in Iraq say explosions in the building came from booby trap bombs set by the Islamic State. And back here in the U.S., we're following two major stories at opposite sides of the nation. We'll take a look at what's going on right now in Washington. But first, we go to Oakland, California, where firefighters are battling a massive structure fire there. The massive fire started around 6 o'clock this morning at a three-story apartment building. Fire crews say that seven people had to be pulled from the fire and that several more were injured in that blaze. The fire chief says about 60 people live in the building and so far, no deaths have been reported. Hopefully that stays that way. Over in the nation's capital, here's a live look from the Senate floor where the vote for Supreme Court nominee Neil Gorsuch has just been pushed to next week. Republicans aim to have Gorsuch confirmed by April 7th. So to come here on your Monday afternoon, we have a Help Me Hank consumer alert. We're going to tell you about a simple trick that may lower your credit card fees. And Brandon's back with a look at our forecast around here. Clouds keeping us out of the 70s today, but still pretty darn nice out there. Warming things up and then cooling things down. Rain must be to blame. We'll explain it all next. Only it's. Welcome back, everybody. We do have a Help Me Hank consumer alert for you this noon for anyone who uses credit cards about getting rid of those costly fees. A survey by CreditCard.com found that 80% of people who just simply asked their credit card company to waive or lower an annual fee got it. 69% who asked for a lower interest rate got approval. And 87% who asked to have late fees waived we're also successful. Study authors say a competitive market prompts the companies to negotiate with customers. I wonder if I can negotiate more sunshine and warmer temperatures from Brandon. Well, it's going to cost you a little something, Rhonda. I, aren't you going to waive the fees on that? Um, well, I will waive the fees, but then I have additional fees that. <laughs> All right, I'm moving on to print. another meteorologist. All right, here we go. Look at these winds coming. Uh, they're starting to pick up a little bit, but this is elevated on that flag there coming out of the southwest and a good look at downtown, a good look at Belle Isle, where more and more people spending their lunch hours, getting a little walk in 58 degrees. Pretty nice stuff here. Southwest winds at about 11 miles an hour. Just keep pumping in warmer air. If we we could thin these clouds out or break the clouds apart, we would see temperatures around 70 degrees. Instead, low 60s on average, but we should all get there because of the southwest winds. These winds, for the most part, are not coming across big bodies of water except for southern Ontario. So the rest of us in the low 60s today, cloudy to some hazy sun. Rain showers are coming back here overnight. 2 to 7 a.m. is that time frame, and the models have been pretty consistent in which areas are going to get the rain. It is not for everybody. We'll show you in just a second here. You can see our winds coming out of the west-southwest. This shows the overall wind field across the country, and look at this little swirl right down here across Missouri, down into Arkansas. This is an area where we're watching for severe weather today. Could be some pretty nasty storms at times in Kentucky, Tennessee, Alabama, and uh, parts of the Deep South. And this is going to be a pattern over the next several days. Some pretty strong energy coming out of Texas, and most of it is staying down to the south. As far as the severe weather goes, we're on the northern fringe of things, and you can see the wet weather across central Illinois. Again, coming in our area overnight. We fight it off during the daytime hours. Here's 4 p.m. in the model. Look at this, shows a little thinning of the clouds. Stop it here at 2 a.m. And again, the models have been consistent. Mainly, we're looking at areas south of 696 and maybe even east of 275. But I would say our south zone and metro zone, probably the greatest risks for that rain. And, you know, spring showers, we could always use them. By 7 a.m., exiting the area. And a couple of things working against us tomorrow as far as temperatures. One is the cloud cover. Could be early to mid-afternoon before we start to clear it out. And instead of southwest winds tomorrow, they're more northerly. And so temperatures will be down 5 to 10 degrees from where we're at today. Probably in the low to middle 50s on your Tuesday. Daylight hours dry. And on Wednesday, we're looking at a lot of sunshine, but 
still dealing with those north winds, so we'll drop temps even more. And then we get another rain chance coming in here. I would say mid afternoon on Thursday, maybe a little bit later than that, but rain showers uh, mid to late day Thursday again mid afternoon through the night time and early Friday should start to see those showers wrap up right now. Rhonda the weekend pretty nice and dry. All right, sounds good, Brandon. So here's some interesting news for those that have nut allergies, maybe allergic to some nuts and not others. And good health, there's good news. If you've been diagnosed with being allergic to nuts, there's a new study that found that 50% of people allergic to a specific kind of nut, like say walnuts, almonds, or cashews, had no reaction when they ate other kinds of nuts. I'm one of those people. In fact, very few of those diagnosed with a peanut allergy ended up clinically allergic to tree nuts. Allergy researchers also say that babies exposed to peanut butter are 80% less likely to develop a peanut allergy as an adult. So very interesting. So to come the surprise news, a group of reality show contestants received after spending a year in the woods. And Tom Brady's jersey continues to make headlines. The QB's latest record breaking feat coming up next. Don't go away. It's not always people who are the targets in police shootings. Thousands of times every year, dogs are shot and killed, usually as police officers execute search warrants. I take this dog now. It's part of the job, but some are saying Detroit police are killing too many dogs when they don't need to. Probably two shots. And in some cases, juries agree. One dog owner awarded over $100,000 and you paid the tab. The Defenders, tonight at 11. Replay so Welcome back, everybody. Let's take a look at some stories that you may have missed, and this is a pretty wild one. A Scottish reality show called Eden took an unexpected twist when it was canceled. It was taken off the air, but nobody told the participants. In the challenge reality show, 20 players were tasked with setting up a society of their own in the woods over the course of a year. Except only four episodes were filmed before the program got canned in August Oof. when the remaining 10 contestants emerged from the woods this weekend. They got all caught up. They were told about Brexit, uh, the election of President Trump, and oh yeah, that the show was canceled about eight months ago. Right. <laughs> Can you believe that? Well, they had to be furious. They all lost 60 pounds and, you know, <laughs> that very organic. It was a lifestyle change perhaps they, they needed. It. All right, so listen to this. The big story last week was the search for Tom Brady's stolen Super Bowl jersey, but today the New England QB is making headlines for a completely different reason. CBS Boston reports Brady's number 12 jersey was the top selling NFL jersey in all 50 states for the entire month of February. Brady is now the only player in history for any professional sports team to accomplish such a jersey feat. That's pretty incredible. I mean, it's unanimous, universal across all states. People love Tom Brady, and you can't deny his accomplishments, no I matter how much you want to. For some reason, because of the Belichick, Tom Brady, Deflategate, whatever it is, I don't think that everybody did love Tom Brady, but because he's getting up there and he's still awesome, people yeah. do love him. <laughs> okay, that was so profound, Brandon. Thank you.